Hey guys, I want to go over uh, this handout very quickly. Um, <clears throat> I realize that it may have been a bit challenging for some of you, so let's take a look. Uh, first, let me apologize for the cramped nature of my work here. Um, it may seem a little bit tight, and it is. Okay, so for part A, we are asked to determine the total resistance of the circuit shown in 5.25. Okay, so um, as I've stated here now in my previous video as well, it, <clears throat> you should note that what we have here is a parallel slash series circuit, okay? So what that means is we need to add our parallel resistance to our series resistance. And the way that we do that is like this. Total resistance in the circuit is going to equal the series uh, resistor plus the total parallel resistance. Okay, so, and this is going to be the case anytime you have resistors in parallel in a circuit, okay? You need to first calculate that parallel resistance and then you can add it up to other resistances in the circuit. And, and the way that you will do that is just by using a series calculation. Okay, so then we need to calculate our parallel resistance. Note that I have given each of my resistors here an identity, uh, R sub one, R sub two, and R sub three are shown here. And uh, I can then find my total resistance by adding up the inverse of R sub one and R sub two and then uh, raising that to the negative one power. Okay, please see my previous video if you're not sure what's going on there. Okay, when I substitute my actual values, I will find that I get 1.2 uh, ohms for my parallel resistance, okay? I can then add that parallel resistance to resistor three, which is 1.8 ohms, to get my total resistance in the circuit, which is 3 ohms, okay? I then use Ohm's law using the voltage or potential difference of the battery and dividing that by total resistance, okay? So the resistance of my battery is 6 volts. The total resistance of the circuit is 3 ohms. So that means that my current in the circuit is going to be 2 amps. And once I know this, I can start calculating <clears throat> power. Okay, so uh, the first thing I have done then is calculated the voltage through uh, my third resistor. So V sub three is going to equal the current that we just calculated times uh, the resistance of resistor three, which is two amps times 1.8 ohms, and that gives me 3.6 volts. Okay, if I know this information, uh, then I now know the voltage across my parallel resistors because remember that they're going to consume resistant, uh, sorry, voltage in proportion to their parallel resistance. Okay, so let's go take a look at that. <clears throat> here we go. So uh, the parallel voltage, uh, in other words, V sub one here across the parallel uh, resistors is going to equal uh, my battery's voltage minus the voltage of resistor 3. Okay, so I take 6 volts and I subtract the 3.6 volts that we just calculated and I get 2.4 volts. So uh, that will be the voltage from this point to this point, and that's why I've drawn this. Uh, voltmeter here. Okay, so what that means then is that each parallel resistor is going to be pulling 2.4 volts because that is the nature of parallel, uh, parallel circuits. Okay, so once we know that, once we have the voltage, we can calculate uh, the current and power dissipated in each of the resistors. So let's start with resistor 1. The current through resistor one is going to equal the voltage across resistor one, which we've just found is 2.4 volts, 
divided by the resistance of resistor one, which is 2.0 ohms. Okay, so that gives me 1.2 amps. Once I know that information, uh, I can plug it into uh, power and I can calculate my power. Note that we could uh, do a shortcut here uh, using just voltage and resistance. And there's a formula for that in your book, but uh, I just wanted to show you the current calculation as well uh, because we are required to by this problem. Uh, normally though, if I was just asked to find the power, I would just use the voltage and resistance. <clears throat> and you should get the same result. Again, that formula is in your data booklet. Um, if I remember correctly, and I think I do, it's just P equals uh, V squared divided by R. Okay, uh, so there is the current and power through our first resistor. The current and power through our second resistor is going to use the same methodology. Okay, so I take the voltage across my parallel resistors, 2.4 volts, and I divide it by the resistance of resistor 2, 3.0 ohms, and I get my current then uh, 0.8 amps. Okay, so again, the power is going to just be the current times the voltage, or you could use voltage squared divided by resistance, doesn't matter, um, but there you go. 1.92 watts. All right, uh, R sub 3 uh, it, for this one, I already know the current, so I don't need to calculate it again. Uh, it's just the total current in the circuit. Okay, uh, power then is current squared times the resistance of that resistor. 2.0 amps squared times 1.8 ohms is equal to 7.2 watts. Okay, I've also thrown a little check up here. Um, I can calculate the power coming out of my battery. Uh, just by multiplying the voltage times the current. And what I'll find is that my power, uh, my total power should be 12 watts, okay? And we can apply Kirchhoff's law here in terms of power because the total power in the circuit should equal the total power kicked off by that battery, okay? And so I've added up all of my power from each resistor and I find that it is equal to 12 watts, okay? So the sum of power in the circuit should be zero, and we're taking uh, the 12 watts from the battery, and we subtract the power of each component, and we should get zero. In other words, the power provided by the battery should equal the power in each component. Okay, so that's the first problem. 5.4. Uh, we've actually covered this uh, in my previous video. We've covered this exact circuit, basically. So uh, I'm going to just show you the answer here. And if you need to pause the video and have a look, go ahead. Uh, I have already flashed a card, I think, for the other video. So have a look if you find this one confusing. Okay, so... Uh, in 5.15, we have a situation where we have a circuit with a switch, and this is very common in IB physics. So uh, in the first scenario, <clears throat> we have the switch open, and in the second scenario, we're going to close this switch. And I'm just gonna draw here what happens when we close that switch. So, um, because it's pretty important and you need to be familiar with this idea. Uh, the idea that I'm going to talk about here is short circuiting, okay? So what happens when the switch is open is current flows through resistor one. It has to flow through resistor one. It is required to flow through resistor one. And it flows all around here. And this red line then represents all of the current in the circuit. Okay, but when we close that switch, something interesting is going to happen. Uh, we are going to short circuit this resistor and it is no longer going to get any current, okay? So when, when I close this switch like this, 
This now is what the current through this circuit will look like. Why? What is happening here? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, short circuits occur when elect electricity is taking the path of least resistance, okay? Remember that our wires have very low resistance, um, and most of the time you will just assume that their resistance is zero. Um, it's not actually true, but that, that is the assumption that you should make when you're doing your calculations, okay? So what that means is that uh, the electricity is just going to bypass this resistor because it's harder now to go through this loop than it is just to go this way, okay? So electricity will always take the path of least resistance. And that is the fundamental principle behind a short circuit. And that's the reason why um, R1 is not going to get any current once that switch is closed. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. When the switch is open, R1 is going to get current because uh, no current is going to flow through here. Why would it? It's a broken circuit. Okay, so when that switch is open, uh, we need to calculate total resistance in a parallel series circuit. So as you can see, uh, R sub one is going to be in series and R sub two and R sub three are going to be in parallel, okay? So that means we need to do the series parallel trick and we've gone over that a number of times now. First thing you do is find your parallel resistance and I've done that here and found that it is 2.0 ohms. Second thing I'm going to do is find the series resistance using my parallel resistance and the resistance of resistor one. And that will give me a total resistance then for my circuit of 4.0 ohms. Once I have that total resistance, I can then find my current, okay? So uh, there are two steps here that we always do. Step one, find the total resistance in the circuit. Step two, find the total current uh, coming out of the battery, okay? And we call that, I have called that here I sub zero. You can call it whatever you want. Okay, uh, so I find I sub zero by taking the voltage of the battery and dividing by the total resistance that I have just calculated, okay? This is a very, very important step that you should be taking. Okay. Uh, so determine the current of the two points. Okay, so I'm asked to find uh, the potential difference across A and B. So basically what we need to recognize here is that uh, the voltage across A and B, the way they've set it up, they make it look a little bit trickier than it is. Because these wires have zero resistance, when I'm taking uh, the voltage for A and B, it's basically like putting a voltmeter here right across this resistor, okay? Um, so we can call this V sub one, and this will be um, equal to VAB, okay? Now, the fact that our wires actually have a little bit of resistance means that um, V sub one is actually going to be uh, slightly different than VAB, but again, we're assuming zero resistance here. Okay, so uh, once we know the current uh, through that resistor, uh, 2.0, sorry, 3.0 amps, we just multiply it by its resistance and we get its voltage. Okay, so this is just Ohm's law uh, V equals I R, okay? All right, uh, so closed. When we close the switch, we short the two ohm resistor, as I've stated, and electricity takes the path of least resistance, which I have also stated. So the potential difference across that resistor is going to be equal to zero. And if that is equal to zero, there is no load between point A and B when the switch is closed, and therefore the voltage will be zero. So. Uh, in reality, again, the wire is going to have 
small amount of resistance, so, um, but it's going to be very small. So what maybe to be just a little more accurate, we would say VAB is almost equal to zero, but there will be a very, very small, small amount of voltage. Okay, uh, how much do I have left? Ooh, quite a lot. Okay, well, these are tricky. I think I'm gonna have to do a two-parter here because I have a meeting in nine minutes. Okay, we will come back to 5.16 and I will make this a two-part video and throw up a card. So stay tuned and have a great day.